So Jillian, I am sure that in your years as a nutrition and diet coach, you have come across a whole lot of fat loss myths. What are some of the most prevalent that you come in contact with? I think one of the ones that drives me the most crazy is that people feel like they can't change their metabolisms. Okay. That they're just, that's their destiny. And that's not true. That's not true. So the truth is genetics does play a giant part in your metabolism, but there is something that we could do to change our metabolism and increase it. And that is to build lean muscle mass by resistance and strength training. So the more lean muscle mass we have, the more calories, the more energy our body burns. Muscle weighs more than fat. Now, <laughs> Let's just, let's just break that down. I can understand how you might think that, but if you think about it, muscle weighs more than fat. One pound of muscle and one pound of fat weigh the same. They weigh a pound. The difference is that one pound of muscle is so much more condensed in space, so it takes up less space in your body. So while your scale weight may say that you weigh the same, you actually look different. 150 pounds is 150 pounds, but two people could look completely different at 150 pounds, and one could be a size two and one could be a size 10. Exactly. Okay. I hear a lot about having a cutoff time, like don't eat after 6 p.m. Right. Any truth to that? I mean, how arbitrary is don't after, eat after 6 p.m.? Let's say you eat at 6 p.m. and go to bed at 7.30. What if you eat at 6 p.m. and go to bed at 11 o'clock or go to bed at one o'clock in the morning? So the truth is that your metabolism never turns off. It operates 24 hours a day. So there is no truth in don't eat after a certain time in terms of weight loss. Because weight loss really is about the total amount you eat and it doesn't start and stop in a single day. Is there, is there any reason why someone would want to um, play around with the amount of time between their last meal and the time they go down to bed? So the only reason to cut off your food prior to bedtime mm -hmm. would it be if it's a disturbance, um, whether that means you have indigestion or depending on what people, you know, just a sleep disturbance from that. But if we're speaking purely in terms of metabolism and weight loss, there is no reason to have an artificial cutoff time to eating. Oh, it's okay, I don't really need to watch what I eat because, you know, I train a lot. And I wish that were true, like it would be so much easier if all you had to do in order to change the way that you look is exercise a whole lot, but you cannot out-train a bad diet. Um, exercise is great and exercise is something that we all should be doing, but when it comes to changing your body composition, it's always going to be about the food. So when you look at those caloric expenditures that your Fitbit shows you or that the treadmill or the elliptical show you after you've done your workout, what you don't realize is that that number, not only is that formula that they're using to calculate it just an estimate, it's not particularly geared to you specifically, but it also is taking into account the calories that you would be burning at rest. So that's not an additional 350 calories that you're burning or an additional 500 calories that you're burning. That's the total amount of calories that that computer thinks that your body is burning in that period of time. It's not all that much more when you compare it to the amount that you would have burned just sitting on the couch relaxing. So are you saying that we way overestimate the calories that we burn during exercise? Way overestimate the calories that we burn during exercise. So I want to give an example of that. A 150 pound woman will burn roughly 100 calories per mile, whether she's walking at a 15 or 20 minute pace or whether she's running at a 10 minute pace. Right. So let's say that 150 pound woman goes out and walks for three miles and it takes her an hour an hour of walking, the total amount of calories expended during that time is the same as one regular size Snickers bar that you would get out of a vending machine. So by that same regard then, doing a, you know, a workout like that and drinking a Gatorade, right. you're, you're just erasing all of the work that you just did or eating a protein bar, right? Absolutely. People believe that, especially with a diet like keto or something, that carbs make us fat. Right. I think my absolute pet peeve when it comes to this okay. is the belief that there's a single food group or macronutrient mm -hmm. that causes people to gain weight, right? And the keto diet makes carbs the enemy. 
Right. You know, the belief is that eating carbs are gonna make you fat. And it's not true. It's not true. Okay. But then let's look at the complete opposite. We're right. about the same age, we grew right. up at the same time, and we remember in the 90s, the belief was that eating fat made us fat. Do you remember that? Every, everything was fat free, everything was low fat, yep. Fat free frozen yogurt, tons of Snackwell's cookies. Were we able to lose weight in the 90s? No, because I was eating boxes of Snackwell cookies right. because they had no fat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so the truth is, fat does not make us fat. Carbs don't make us fat. Eating too much overall is what makes us fat. And it doesn't matter what it is. Doesn't matter what it is. If okay. we ate too many carrots, if that was possible for us, we would get fat. So if I am doing everything exactly the way that I should be doing it, if I am, if my goal is weight loss and I am creating a caloric deficit and I am on point, I am, I am watching what I'm eating, I am making sure that I am exercising, I'm drinking water, I'm doing everything that I should be doing. I will lose weight every single week, right? Absolutely not. No? No. So, so weight loss then, what you're saying is that it's not a linear process, right? It's not going to be constant, it's not gonna be consistent and even every seven days. Absolutely not. There... Why not? Because there's far too many factors that go into weight as we see okay. reflected on this scale. So weight loss, especially if we're talking in terms of what we see when we step on a scale, takes has so many other factors that come into play. You know, our level of body water, how hydrated are you when you get on that scale? Um, what did you eat the night before? Did you eat high sodium foods? Like Chinese make, food. Like Chinese food <laughs> or a nice big pizza. Okay. <laughs> so you may be retaining some fluid. How much sleep did you get the night before? What time of the month is it for you? So all of these things influence the weight that you see on a scale. So we're not gonna wanna look at one day or one week, but we're gonna wanna look at how that changes over time. Okay, so an aggregate weight loss or looking at the trend, if our weight, you know, it's gonna ebb and flow, it's gonna dip, and it's gonna it's gonna rise but as long as say month to month that that graph is going downward then we're moving in the right direction correct all right cool but also our body doesn't behave just linearly okay. so we're gonna have times where we hit small sticks mm -hmm. and often those are the times that people fall off because they get stuck but if we keep following the right behaviors we will actually push through those sticks for more great nutrition videos click here <laughs>